Hearty welcome to three-day international webinar on impact of physics in healthcare. Our cosmic father, bless each one of us who have gathered here. Fill all our minds with your enthusiasm, wisdom, and help us to understand everything and transform each one of us to become great contributors to this society. We are happy to introduce Dr. Rajkumar. I invite Dr. Sharon to present his biodata to the gathering. Namaste. Namaste. It is my pleasure and privilege to introduce our distinguished speaker, Dr. Rajkumar Ujguri. Dr. Rajkumar Ujguri is an enthusiastic, active, and renowned resource person in the field of innovation. He has been a postdoctoral fellow from University of Frankfurt, Germany. He has received his doctorate degree from University of Frankfurt. Our speaker has an outstanding research experience as a research assistant, guest scientist in Germany. He obtained his master's degree in biotechnology from the University of Giessen, Germany. He earned many academic honors like postdoctoral fellowship, Els Bronner, Frenicius Stephen, and many more to his credit. Dr. Rajkumar Utkori has published many research papers in leading international journals like IOVS, PASEP Journal, Journal of Neurochem, etc., and presented his research work in Berlin, USA, and Stockholm. Dr. Rajkumar is a member of Federation of European Neuroscience Societies, Fellow of Indian Society of Applied Biotechnology, member of Indus India Foundation. On the top of everything, our esteemed speaker is the founder of the Chamberlain Student Society and publisher of the book, The Biobricks. He also organized many international conferences on bio-industry interactions. He has not only been a great academician, but also an active sportsman. He excelled in various sports and games and won many prizes. In a nutshell, our speaker is a young, dynamic, inspiring, electrifying role model to all the younger generation to promote and to exchange cutting edge ideas in an effort to foster fruitful research networking amongst educational community. I welcome you, sir, virtually to our midst on behalf of Maristella College, Vijaywada. Thank you, sir. Now, I hand over the session to our honorable speaker, Dr. Rajkumar Kutkuri. Thank you, sir. Uh, first of all, good afternoon, everybody from my side. And uh, thanks a lot for the kind introduction. And it's a, a great honor. Now, uh, I would like to uh, focus on German higher education. And I think this is mainly for the students, but anybody interested can also stay and then uh, listen to this one. So first one, uh, I'm not for I'm not telling about any many countries. The reason is I'm here in Germany since uh, 10 years and I know the pros and cons of Germany and how the complete system works over here. And the second thing is I don't want to compare any countries uh, and create any kind of a controversies uh, from my side. So what are the advantages of Germany? Uh, in Germany, there are more than 200 recognized universities, and it's really in one of the top five countries for research and also for innovations as well. And there are so many courses and the education is generally free. But uh, since last two years, they are charging the fees, which is really uh, not high compared to many countries. And this is a really safe country. Trust me, even if you go out at two o'clock, there is nothing going to happen. And incidences are really, really less. And especially in case of the science, uh, biological sciences or other sciences for the innovation and the funding, it is one of the top in the world. And you don't need to require, you don't require a very high IELTS or the TOEFL score. And uh, even if you have a basic 70%, you can get into very good universities in bachelor's or in master's as well. And the op opportunities for the employment is high, but please be uh, informed that you need to have language skills in order to get into companies but in case of the phds uh, you don't need this one and uh, uh, i will come back about uh, why germany is not in the top but you know german language is not mandatory uh, but knowing is knowing the language is really really advantage over here 
because there is uh, this lot of idea from many students what i'm hearing in different colleges that they think that german language is mandatory to come here but it is utterly wrong uh, now there are so many courses completely in english not even a single lecture in german and uh, in germany you need a lot of paperwork uh, but other thing you have to remember if you want to apply for germany is like the early you apply the sooner you get the admission this is one basic thing early you apply early you get the admission and many people also ask me why there are not a lot of german universities in the top 5 or top 10 if the funding is so high and if the country is so good the reason is uh, even at the time when i came there are not a lot of universities which offer their courses in english this is 10 years before um and then what happened is if you have to be uh, top in the international rankings of the universities there has to be many criteria such as how many international students are coming how many papers were published in english and uh, how uh, how many english language courses are there in the university as i mentioned at that point of time i think hardly 50 percent of universities among these 200 uh, even don't have did not have the english language courses but at the same after a decade i think they have really realized about this one and uh, it took, at this point of time i can tell you over 80 to 85 percent of the german universities do offer courses completely in english so which is uh, which is very advantage for many people and also previously it, it used to be a completely free course and they have now uh, also realized that there could be a chance uh, of the flow even if they uh, uh, introduce a basic fee so that's the reason they have uh, introduced the basic fee which uh, i will also tell you what is the amount in the next slides and then, you know, uh, about applications, I also see that a lot of students are going to the consultants, all this. It's up to you if you want to go. But the application procedure, at least now, uh, I have just gone through it uh, two days before. And the application procedure is so simple because everything is there in English. The complete information, if somebody wants to study in Germany, can be found in this website called dad.de. And the application procedure can be done using the website called uniassist.de. This uni assist is something like a common portal where they initially scrutinize the applications and send it to the universities so that the universities will finally select the applications. These people check the authenticity of the documents, everything. And 80% of the university applications are processed through the uni assist. There are still 20% where you can directly apply online. And uh, as I told you now, most of the universities are now charging uh, semester semester fees of 1500 euros, and which means nearly 3000 euros, which comes down at the rate of uh, 80, uh, around 2.4 lakh uh, per year. Uh, so this uh, this semester fees includes the charge for transportation, tra uh, for the library usage, and many other services. So it's really not so high. Even I think in India, the fees are so high. And you know, for the purpose of the visa, you need to have the living expense at around 853 euros per month, uh, which comes down to 10,000 euros per year. Uh, so the, for the visa purpose, you have to block this much of amount, which is uh, 10,000 euros, 10,000 euros, which comes down to eight to 10 lakhs per year. And uh, just trust me, if you are having a basic lifestyle, uh, this expense could come down to 600 euros, which is more than enough for a basic lifestyle of living. So, you know, I would tell even without doing a part time for two years, it could be 10 to 11 lakhs. And I know so many students, I think even if you are a software person or even if you are anybody uh, from any course, if you are studying here, uh, it is e you can get some opportunities, get into something. Maybe you might struggle a little bit, but it depends upon your performance. It depends upon your project works, everything. And most of the people uh, have been settled over here because the employment is good, definitely. And also because the reason is, if you know or not, Germany is one of the richest countries in the world with high amount of the billionaires. And in Europe, uh, Germany is considered to have the most stable kind of economy compared to any other European country. Uh, and uh, of course, Switzerland and France are also there, but Germany is equally good. And um, if you'd see about the admissions, there are two admissions for Germany as well. One is the summer intake and one is a winter intake. So normally the classes uh, or the admissions uh, end in April and the classes begin in April over here. And the application deadline is January 15th. And for the best universities, uh, which are the top universities where you don't need to apply through the uni assist or probably some uni assist through uni assist, the application deadline is November 15th. Um, and then uh, for the winter semester, the classes begin normally in September or October and the classes start 
in July. And for the best universities, it is even more uh, before which the admission closes by March 15th. So the early you are send, uh, sending the application, the best chances you get the admission. Even if you are 90% and if you send late, I think the chances will be less compared to the person who is having 75% and who has sent the application very early. And then, uh, as I told, uni assist. Uh, so just you have to visit this uh, this website, and in uh, one application you can select as many universities as possible. So, uh, but it is uh, that they charge seventy five euros for the first application, and for every next application they charge you thirty euros extra. So, which means if you want to apply for one course in one particular uni, uh, two courses in one particular university, you will be charged at around hundred euros. And if you want to select another university, you charge one thirty. But the best thing is that uh, my suggestion is first try to check all the universities which are offering free applications and uh, offering the application online from their university portal so that you can go first try to fill all these applications and, dip and check whether you are getting any admission into them or not. And if you're not getting, then try to carefully select which course you wanted to and which university, and then try to pay the fees so that you know, you're know you not uh, applying to so many universities and paying so much of money. And then I also want to mention about uh, research as a career, uh, because if you if, uh, if people are interested into research as career, either in Germany or in other abroad. So the normal procedure is, uh, of course, you're doing your BTECs or the BSCs, and then you have to do your master's or your MTECs, and then go to the pre-HDs. This is a general procedure. But uh, there are many entrance examinations across uh, uh, India, across India and also over here, where after your BTEC or the BSc, you can write a, a examination for these integrated PhDs, so that after the BTEC, you directly go to the integrated PhD. And uh, of course, PhD takes four to five years, but you can save this one to 1.5 years without doing the master's, because in the integrated PhD, it is usually up to five years, so you reduce one to uh, 1.5 years. And other thing is, integrated PhDs are usually fully funded. In most of the cases, depends upon the performance. If you're not uh, they will initially fund you after qualification uh, selected after you get selected for the uh, selected through the entrance and uh, if you don't uh, uh, if you don't get enough enough percentage or enough performance then they stop your funding so other thing is like integrated PhDs are also offered in India, uh, such as you have IIC integrated PhD program uh, for which you have to qualify the JAM examination. And there are also other entrance examinations conducted by prestigious universities, such as uh, institutes, such as NCBS, National Center for Biological Sciences. There are different areas. You don't think that this is just, just for uh, biological sciences that you can be eligible. And there is these entrance examination. And also there are several entrance examination conducted by many universities. Uh, where you can go into integrated PhDs. Uh, and all for all these universities, you know, the minimum requirement is 60%. And during this MSc, you already would be getting the stipendium of around 12,000 rupees in India. And in case of Germany, I saw a few universities which offer up to uh, 700 to 1,000 euros. Uh, this you have to check. And uh, these integrated PhDs in Germany are offered by these universities, University of Cologne, University of Würzburg, and University of Göttingen, and, and many more. Because as I told you, you know, there are 200 universities and you can trust all the 200 universities. There are good funding. And here you have only one university for a city, not more. And only in bigger cities, you have two or three and two could be private. Apart from that, everything is under uh, one university hub. You have different institute, but everything comes under one university. And then uh, for the physics people as well, uh, I have especially uh, I have uh, searched some courses uh, and most of these universities over here, what I have mentioned, do not even have the uh, tuition fees. What I have mentioned this 3000 euros per year. So you see the kind of the courses, uh, functional materials and advanced material analysis. Uh, applied natural sciences and then analytical instruments and sensor technology and biophysics, matter physics. And if you're interested in astrophysics, there are also some universities which are offering astrophysics in uh, Germany. 
and also astrophysics uh, from these universities. You see there are around three universities which are offering and there are there is this national and international students interested to join. There is a scholarship program, as I already mentioned, but for this you have to apply by December 1st. Uh, this is the latest information what I have seen, but I don't know if this is also applicable for the next years and the onus is on the students to check all such things and apply. Uh, similarly, you uh, yeah. Similarly, you also see in quantum engineering there are some courses. There are some courses with regarding to the innovation and sustainability, which is uh, which would be demanding in the uh, next few years. And also pure program in physics in the university, also in organic and molecular electronic, such as like using the organic materials to produce electronics or uh, such uh, advanced areas and also nanoscience and technology is also being offered. And all these courses, what at least I have served for you people, these are all uh, in English and the complete information is also uh, in English. The website is very simple to go, the DAD or the uni assist uh, and uh, just now you can see what the consultants are charging. I think I have heard that the consultants are charging for application of three to four universities. They charge you around 25,000 to 50,000, depending upon the city or the state. Uh, if, if you are a BTEC student, if you cannot go through this application form and then fill it properly, then uh, I leave it to you uh, what your studies have uh, taught you. And then, you know, even in India, there is so much, so many biotech companies, you know, the wealth, there is 300, there are over 300 biotech com pharmaceutical companies in India. And Biocon has been ranked 23rd among the world in the top 60. And then there are 800 universities in India. And there is a lot of boom in the clinical research. So much wealth is there. But I think still, I do understand that there is a lot of competition uh, for all these things. And that is a reason. I really think at this point of time, irrespective of education, uh, thinking out of box is a need of the hour. Uh, and for this purpose, you know, uh, I just wanted to tell you, you have to really be expressive. At least I have given you so many areas and just try to imagine I have prepared over 150 slides for these two uh, days conference and just see how much I have put in, not for myself, it's only for you people, so that you can understand the innovation, select your area of choice, and then try to be expressive in that, try to design unless and until you're not interested in it at all. Uh, if you want to have just the normal job, and um, uh, I think this is of, of course okay, but still, I think if you are interested in money, fame, all these things, I think this is the best thing to go, thinking out of the box. And even if not, you know, just your attitude and then your dedication, you can really see there are so many opportunities which are existing. And also, you know, uh, the most important thing and the difference between our uh, Indian and this one is theoretically we are really good. But uh, here people learn so much only during their project works because they are technologically advanced. But remember, in all other areas, we are far superior. And what that is the reason I want to tell is all the students have to make this project works compulsory. I know there is this new education policy came up, but how much it is effective, it is dependent not on the government, but it depends upon you, faculty and the students. There are so many areas which are just beside. You don't need to work on quantum if you're not so interested or if you don't have. But see the kind of uh, innovations what I have already mentioned. And there are so many research areas. There are so many problems surrounding us. So we have to find so many solutions and these are all can be converted into opportunities pollution how it can be controlled how can be cleanliness develop science education how to take charge as during the times of pandemics and epidemics water management safe food all these things i think everybody know but how sensitive are you is a point and i believe that um, at least uh, what has covid taught you if you still uh, don't think that we are responsible and we have to take charge of this i think then it is uh, it's sorry, it is a sorry situation at that point of time. And I believe that, you know, within the colleges, there are physics, chemistry and biology department. At least uh, with these, you see how in the interdisciplinary each and every branch is. And, you know, you you just have a UV bulb without the application. What are you going to do with it? So the uh, the departments have to combine and then the problems can be easily addressed. And at least one or two faculty members can really make a difference. I know that there are so good faculty because believe me, the kind of the basics what you faculty people know at this point of time, because I'm not in the teaching field, I might, I might not be remembering so much. You really are good at basics. So the only point is that now we have to apply it. 
And also remember the students have to approach the faculty for such a things. And I think uh, one such association can bring. And just imagine, even at the college levels, if you are, it might take a little time. But if you're working together and creating some kind of this, there will be a huge amount of the money for the institutes uh, as well, which you have to remember. And the managements have to be convinced in particular way. At least one per, one college can take a lead in such a way and uh, try to create such opportunities. And then, you know, as I already mentioned, you know, you're you're all science stars. You all have great knowledge over there and we have so many problems and uh, it is a time that we think the solution together and the young minds have to be equally supported and the young people have to search for so many opportunities which are existing and the faculties should be inspiring towards innovation. And I think uh, all together we have to take science and India to the next level as uh, Vyas Rauser on the first day have already mentioned the innovation uh, just is not for money making. They also, depending upon how revolutionary they are, it uh, helps the country to go ahead in the rankings at the international platform, which will attract a lot of innovation. And to such things, I'm also presenting you. Like, you know, see the internships and the project opportunities, what they have. I already mentioned what kind of opportunities ISRO is mentioning for the project opportunities. And, you know, there is this another uh, Blue Marble Space Institute of Science, Young Scientist Space Bioscience Program. Uh, this is for the graduate or the P or the master students. There is no funding, but people in the US, I think if you are interested to go to the US and study um, astrophysics, I think uh, this is by one of the NASA kind of uh, institute and you can apply for this one. And there are so many CSIR labs which are offering the projects for the students and uh, you have to uh, see the newspapers which uh, uh, for their advertisements. And these are the few scholarships and the fellowships which I have collected for you. And these are not just for the graduate students. Even now, you, you might have been missed a few of these. But try to uh, But there are a lot of such things for even the school students. For example, you see the seat uh, scheme for the early attraction of talent in India by the departments of, of science and technology in India. There is also uh, like uh, CSIR innovation award for the school children and the KBPI after the 10th class, people can uh, get, people are eligible to apply for this once they qualify the uh, entrance examination of KVPY. There are so many Olympiads and national entrance tests and then innovation awards, JNCSR. This is for the bachelors or the master students who want to do their projects during the summer works in the CSIR based institutes. And there are so many other scholarships uh, also which are uh, which are actually present and you search more and you will get even more. And even if you see for the fellowships, also for the Indian students, I don't know if you are already aware of this, but uh, please go through this once. Um, Education Future International Scholarship. This, uh, this is for the in, uh, Indian students to study abroad. This is for both UG study as well as a PG study. And the eligibility of the marks is just 60%. And the amount of the scholarship, what they are providing is around uh, two to 10 lakhs. And the last date for applying is October 15th, yesterday, yesterday. And you see there is other scholarship called the ADB Japan Scholarship for Higher Education. And this is also for the Indian students who are studying abroad. And there is also other one called the Ericsson Innovation Award. There are uh, different themes uh, which are changing regularly. Please try to visit these websites. And there are so many because uh, I don't want to present everything because you have to be responsible for searching for your own careers. And then you see the other few awards like Edison Award and then the Unlimited uh, India. These are for the startup mentoring. And also yesterday you would have seen uh, two days before Vyas Strauss sir also said he also would like to support uh, people with great ideas. So there are so many sources. The only thing is we are not searching properly. And there are so many uh, yearly um, yearly events which are being conducted by the IITs in order to showcase your innovative talents or your awards for your presentation skills, all this. Just go apply for them and uh, your careers can be bright later on. And in conclusion, this is a basic conclusion what I wanted to give at this point of time. Like I tried to present so many areas and opportunities. And uh, as I told, I have taken one month of time to collect the best. Of course, if you see the topic, it's easy. But the way how I thought like this could be useful for the students. And uh, I have uh, figured out so many things and I have selected the best what I thought. And all this effort is for the students and the faculties. 
and i wish my presentation is just not for the certificates if your cvs are not good and if you are having hundreds of these certificates it is literally of no use believe me but if your cvs are extremely good and if you are participating in the international and the national conferences this adds that you are versatile that you are also parallelly going to the conferences it is like that and as i told you the onus has to be on you either if you want to succeed or succumb and then please try to think beyond at least even if one of you people is benefited out of my two days of presentation i will be uh, more than happy and then uh, as i told you how responsible are we i wanted to give you a small uh, ideas about how can you develop your careers and you know uh, at least this time uh, uh, seeing the covid one year being at home what has been done how can i contribute if this has not come uh, as i told you Uh, this is a bad situation uh, which has to which is the, which is existing so i am really interested how uh, why not the college in the colleges all these group together can uh, find the solutions for them to go to the colleges and study or the different ways uh, how they can improve their lectures or anything or their uh, or the research projects anything and then you know what i think is it is really the first most important thing for getting a good job or a good uh, a good qualification is like you have to do genuine project works during masters and bachelors and extra trainings and diplomas would really add because you know now many of the companies if you are seeing they are taking uh, they are many of the people are losing their jobs and the companies are thinking that if you are not versatile in changing of the technology or if you don't have interdisciplinary skills then these are the first people who are taken out of the job unless and until you have you are like pioneer in that one so and also regular visit to the industries and the research institutes just like a trip also can be done and you will learn so much my belief is that you have to be getting exposed to so many things so that i think one time there will be a spark which will uh, make you to uh, think of it and then excel in your careers and try to attend as many practical workshops and trainings as possible and of course uh, if they are free and if you are if you cannot uh, manage the colleges together has to conduct which are offering for free so that you know that some com companies do offer for free to promote their product such things have to be encouraged so that they know about the current science and at least try to uh, attend uh, some competitions during your four years of bachelor's plus two years of masters and if you're not interested in masters in these four years and you know it is important that you know these latest trends uh, of sciences so at least in one month monthly once you can discuss in the classroom what is the latest trend one person can present so that you at the end of your three years of career you at least have the experience of uh, giving good presentations and then knowing a lot of technologies and also maybe you can work the advances of that for example as i told you the water bottles in india you can make it for maybe 1000 rupees instead of 10000 rupees all such things and you don't need to patent or uh, do other things but if you are using for yourself that is more than good and then it's just one hour per week as i told you one uh, advanced uh, journal study per one month once and one hour per week if a classroom is able to spend try to gather opportunities from different websites over a period of month and then divide 10 per member and this will give you a great knowledge about what kind of institutes are there what kind of scholarships are there what kind of opportunities exist what are the advances that you know so many things at an international as well as a national level and always try to be versatile uh, and do not forget to do extra courses diplomas whatever is possible there are a lot of free courses which are currently available with regarding to the app technology with regarding to the uh, stanford courses as well as uh, mit courses there are so many things which you can do it and share the knowledge and you know so that sometimes you might be getting the help from your friends i know in the colleges it's a kind of environment that you don't share certain kind of opportunities but uh, it should be encouraged and please be sensitive to the surroundings and ideas will evolve i think if you ask many people this would be one thing ideas will evolve only if you are sensitive to the surrounding problems uh, i would tell you inspire uh, ignite inspire and innovate and remember even an atomic bomb needs an ignition too you might later cause is all different but it needs an ignition and i think with my presentation i always try to provide this and uh, if one student is able to gather that i'm more than happy for that one and now i also wanted to present about chaperon's organization uh, i ask the permission of this to madam and thanks for accepting for this uh, i have started this organization 10 years before uh, uh, with the aim of uh, 
increasing uh, opportunities for the students and exactly what the chaperones mean. So chaperones mean what I meant is uh, it is the era of the chaps, which is the end people. And um, our aim is to ignite the ambitions in science, especially I know the situation in science in India. It is great, of course, but at the normal college level, it has to be very much high uh, compared to that of the current situations. Everybody talks about the NAC accreditations, but we know the reality uh, of what a NAC accreditation is and how it has to be there. So our aims is we wanted to support a lot of uh, science projects for the schools, colleges, and even undergraduate college, uh, undergraduate or the postgraduate colleges as well. And uh, we want to conduct a lot of inspiring science events and also provide a proper guidance for the students as I provide a lot of uh, guidance for the abroad education uh, over the years. And what we did is we have conducted so many national conferences uh, at CBIT, Siddhartha, even at uh, JNTU Hyderabad campus in these respective years. And to my conferences, I'm I was very happy and I'm very happy that there are more than 400 participants and uh, depending upon the capacity uh, here at JNTU, the maximum capacity was 300, but we almost got the applications of 600 students. And I try to make my events as well very creative, not the general routine seminar presentations, which might be boring for the students. And I don't know uh, how many people attended my conferences till date. Uh, if somebody is listening, uh, if they listen, they know uh, how my events uh, are. And then we are trying to, uh, uh, as of now, my team is not completely strong and I'm trying to build it up so much. And we would be, I'm really looking forward to the people who are good at organizing, who can think about the science projects and any other creative ideas for the events. And if there are good writers or speakers, because I cannot do alone everything uh, which I have done till date with the support of my team, which is invaluable. They have been supporting me so much uh, for all these uh, 12 years. And then we are looking forward uh, is like, you know, if you are inspiring towards our foundation uh, and if you want to lead your passions and if you want to be a science star, I think, uh, uh, and you wanted to take the science of India to a higher level, I think if with your passions and with our dedication, we can take the science in India to the next level and we can make an incredible reach. Uh, if you're interested, you can always mail to this mail address, the chaperons at Gmail. And uh, I, whenever I come to India, I go voluntarily to many colleges and uh, present the students all such kind of opportunities and different topics, whatever the colleges are interested in. Uh, and we also want to conduct many events in the future. So if the colleges are interested, uh, you can just try to uh, write to me and then we will do that one. And with this, I would like to thank all the, especially all the superheroes who are doing a great job at this point of time and uh, we have to be so much responsible to make their work less and uh, to improve the situation in the country. And with this, I also would like to acknowledge uh, Dr. Jacinta Quadras, ma'am, the principal of Stella College, and also, as I already told, Little Flower, ma'am, from the head of the department from Marie Stella College for providing me the opportunity, and uh, Lasina, ma'am, who have recommended me to Little Flower, ma'am, uh, after my first presentation. I would really thank all my chaperones team members who have been supporting me so much, and I would really like to build it uh, in the great strength in the coming years. And I would really thank all my teachers from my LKG to this point of time who are definitely uh, a reason for my uh, for my career to this point and my friends and family also for all their support and for my farmers and from team at Frankfurt as well who have uh, help, who have uh, not told me anything to come over here as always. And thank you for your attention. I don't know whether I have crushed your brain or made you so crazy, uh, but I think it is useful and uh, I would be very happy to take any questions of today's. Yeah, thank you. Thanks a lot, Dr. Rajkumar. My personal question is, what motivated you to go to Germany to take up this higher education? Uh, what motivated, uh, frankly speaking, uh, initially I was uh, trying to uh, go to UK, but I had a visa problem and then uh, I shifted to my focus on Germany uh, because I know that there is a free education and one of my friend is also staying, doing his PhD. And I think I'm destined to be over here, uh, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to return to India. Please take note of it. And uh, I was very happy uh, about my place in Germany uh, over here compared, I think maybe I don't know. So I think uh, this made me to move. This is just like a normal search. I'm never interested to go to US uh, for studies for sure. This is for sure. 
and UK visa was uh, unsuccessful. Though, so later I just uh, came to Germany as a best, best option. Thank you. Then during our conversation, you mentioned that in, in your initial days, you had a lot of struggle. Could you share that experience? What kind of struggle? Is it a language or food or a was literally no struggle uh, definitely in, uh, no struggle in germany ma'am uh, absolutely because uh, there were so many indians in the place where i have gone to gisen there are so many indians and especially there are so many telugu people itself so i have never faced any problem in germany for sure it is about getting the uh, getting the what do you call a phd at one point was little difficult but these are all a part of life i'm i'm very happy for all the struggles uh, because this will make you even a better person so no complaints and i never feel anything is a problem in my case i can say i belong to the sixth department but in your case yeah. you claim that you belong to four departments <laughs> That yes, is. the thing is, first in India, I have finished my master's in biotechnology. And after coming to Germany, uh, because I have to come here, and at that point of time, there is this recession, and it was very difficult to come abroad like the situation now. Of course, at that point of time, it was a financial recession, and it was difficult. Uh, so what happened was I just wanted to land into a certain kind of a course. And uh, the fastest admission what I got was into this agriculture biotechnology. So I went into agriculture biotechnology and I have done it because I'm a person who is interested to do interdisciplinary sciences. And I will be ready to even uh, do MBA in the future for sure. And uh, that's the reason if you see my career, I have also done a diploma in scientific and technical writing. I have also done a diploma in nanoscience and technology. Uh, so. I was I said it's okay I am able to do it and then what happened during my course uh, I have uh, got PhD into two or three different areas because one of the fav one of my favorite area is of course neuroscience and I always thought I would be working on cardiology uh, so I got opportunities but at the end of the day I landed into neurology as I told the techniques are same in the biology or anywhere. For example, you are using the same semiconductor chips even in the water bottle and even in the NASA space machines also. It is simple as like this. It is. It has to be your attitude, what you have to study uh, when you come into certain areas and then you learn about it during the course of the time. And if you are unable to adjust, you have to change the field. But if you, if you take it as a challenging and if you can uh, go through it, I think you can definitely succeed in any field. And as I told you, physics people can also come into biology uh, just with the microscope technique and they will learn biology for sure after working on it for two years. Thanks a lot. Uh, I know you're working on patent right also of uh, some of your work. Uh, could you share something? Uh, no, 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 no. As of now, no. I have some ideas, uh, but because I'm here completely focusing on other stuff, uh, I'm uh, not implementing any any of them, but I wanted to uh, do it in uh, uh, India over there. But but this is really I don't know about them, and if it is really possible or not, also so I don't want to talk anything ab about them at this point of time. Dr. Rajkumar, after completing your PhD, what is your goal? I think I'll I'm I believe that uh, I'm in the peak of my research career at this point of time because I had a great opportunity to work here on different fields of neurology and fascinating fields and uh, this year I almost have published uh, five uh, articles in one year and uh, next year I have some interesting projects to finish and after that I really wanted to come back to India but I don't know depending upon the opportunities how I would decide take I would take a decision after next year man. Very, very kind of you. You shared your experience. I asked all these questions so that this uh, these sort of questions would be there in the youngster's mind, but they may be uh, feeling little inhibited to ask. So on their behalf, I raised. I hope uh, many of the youngsters would be motivated how you were courageous uh, after your studies in India. You took courage to go abroad and you are, how you are developing your knowledge level. Everything would be an inspiring story for everyone. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, Anybody can mail me uh, and I will try to respond as uh, I will definitely respond to all your queries uh, as as quickly as possible. So I would like to thank you all. It's really my privilege to propose what a thanks. First and foremost, I would like to thank our cosmic father for all his graces to conduct this webinar in a successful manner. God has safeguarded all of us and our special thanks are to our sister principals, Dr. Sister Jacinta Quadras and Maristella Management for all the possible support and encouragement they gave to host such webinar. 
because of that now we could connect and we could discuss other than our regular syllabus really as a physics lecturer i learned a lot about the biology so i think everyone also must have felt the same feeling i also take this opportunity to express our special gratitude and thank profusely both the resource persons dr y s rao sir and dr rajkumar for your greatness to accept our invitation and you spend your valuable time and share your expertise with us wonderfully you related the impact of physics in healthcare and bio instrumentation both of your talks covered highlights of significant areas of many disciplines and how the sensor devices and bio instrumentation are useful for diagnostic and treatment purposes our very special thanks to dr rajkumar the young post doctoral student for readily accepting our request and very specially i thank you sincerely for this third day event when i made a request please uh, uh, throw some light upon the potential areas of studies in higher education and uh, job opportunities he took such a lot of effort and uh, brought out today's talk so well really you are both days talk extremely well rajkumar next our sincere gratitude goes to all the participants for your support and for your enthusiasm to take part in this webinar we admire your enthusiasm for learning we got good response from other countries and different states of india so we take this opportunity to thank all of you for the trust you have and you joined us we thank you very sincerely next my special thanks to mr prasad our it core team member for being with us on all these three days and regulating both the google meet as well as youtube being live telecast also i take this opportunity to thank mr raju who is another member of our it core team for his guidance for hosting this webinar they both are our strong supporters in executing all planned activities of the campus in a meticulous way finally i would like to thank all our team members our department members for for their moral support i really feel very happy for the support they extended so finally i thank all of you for your support for your participation in this webinar i hope the deliberation of this webinar some or other way would have given you lot of insights and especially students you think about your future careers in the nicest way because you youth is our wealth and our pillars of the nation so knowledge wise become very strong and become great contributors to this society so continue to have your inspiration and enthusiasm to learn many 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 more things hope we will meet in some other webinar in some way until then we keep praying that all of you should be safe happy and whatever you wish in life god should bless you thank you all and let us support each other and grow strongly thank you all of you